Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and this is Bridge Mobile Basics for Eclipse users. In this video we're going to go over how to use Bridge Mobile both online and over a router using a local area network if you don't have internet access. Bridge Mobile is a real-time viewing software and litigation support software for judges, attorneys, and other clients who you may wish to share your real-time feed with. It is comprised of two pieces. The first is a Bridge Broadcaster subscription for the real-time reporter that is required. It is a yearly subscription, and you can get more information about that on our website or by calling us at 800-800-1759. Advantage Software does offer a 30-day free trial of Bridge Mobile, so please call us if you're interested. And Bridge Mobile also requires that your clients, judges, attorneys, students, or other CART clients have a, the Bridge Mobile viewer. This can be accessed through anything as simple as a web browser, or there are apps that your clients can use on Android devices, on iPads, and some Amazon Fire devices. Any device that is web connected and has a web browser will be able to display Bridge Mobile both over the internet or through a local area network connection. So Bridge Mobile can work anywhere that you need it to for any client that you need it to. In the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to get set up and output to Bridge Mobile. Whether you're outputting to your clients on Bridge Mobile over the internet or using a router to create a local area network, the settings in Eclipse are the same. And so we're going to do that first. So I'm going to open up Eclipse version 9 and select my user. And I'm going to go to my user settings. Next, I'll go to the real time tab. And in the output format section, I don't currently have any output formats listed. I'll hit add. And then it defaults to Bridge Mobile, which is what I want. For Com Device, I'm going to set that to Connection Magic. And that's the same whether you're using a router or you're doing it over the internet. It's one of the great things about Bridge Mobile is that no matter how you're outputting to your clients, the setup in Eclipse is always the same. There are some other options in this window that we'll go over. Apply edits, make sure that any changes or corrections you make to your document are applied to the your client's Bridge Mobile screen so that they can see any corrections you've made so they have the most up-to-date transcript. Apply on pause will make sure that those edits get applied as soon as you stop editing or as soon as you stop writing. Deny saving will prevent your clients from creating a local copy of the document and that may be desirable in some circumstances. Allow backspaces needs to be checked so that Eclipse can remove anything that you delete from the output. All caps is an option if you wish for your output to show to your clients in all caps. This won't affect the translation that you get in Eclipse or your final work products. Uh, this is only for the output. Uh, force margins is not typically used with Bridge Mobile and we don't recommend it except in some extreme circumstances. Flush word delay and maximum words per minute are also typically not used with Bridge Mobile. So this is all I need to worry about setting up, so I'm going to press OK. And I'll press OK all the way out of my user settings. Now that we have the output format set up, we can start outputting to Bridge Mobile. The first example I'm going to show you is over the internet to clients who have the internet in a remote location, or they can be in the same room too, it doesn't really matter as long as everyone's on the internet. So the first thing we're going to do is close Eclipse and make sure I'm connected to the internet because that is integral to this operation. So I'm going to click on my Wi-Fi icon and make sure that I am indeed connected to the, the wireless network that I want to use that has internet access. I don't see any yellow exclamation marks or any indicators that there's a problem with the connection, so I should be fine here. I'm going to open up Eclipse version 9 and we need to first make sure that we are connected to the connection magic server because without that connection we won't be able to output to our remote clients so there are three places to check the server status connection the first is in the info bar on the left it'll say srv connected when it's connected this will always be the last item in the info bar the second place is, is in the status bar at the bottom of eclipse this is the same place where you'll see your page and line number as well as your time codes if the server is connected, you'll see SRV indicating a successful server connection. And if it's not connected, this will just be blank. The third place to check your server connection is under Tools, Connection Magic, View Connections. 
In here, you'll see that I also have SRV connected, same as in the info bar. These indicators should always match. You don't need to check all three before you start a session. As long as you see one, you should be fine. So now that we have the output format set up, we've made sure that we've connected to the internet and that Eclipse is connected to the Connection Magic server, we can start our real-time file. I'm going to choose last because I don't have any information I need to dump. And in the session status window, since this is the basic setup video, I'm just going to go over a basic document setup and not go over the persistent session information. The fields that we need to pay attention here to here are the document name, the password, publicly visible, and the room selector. The document name and password are the information that you're going to provide to your client to log in remotely to your document and this can be anything that you want it to be. It will default to be prepended by BR hyphen and appended by the date and time that you start the real-time file. Um, and then it'll have your file name in the middle. You can change this to anything that you'd like. It doesn't need to remain the default name. I'm gonna go ahead and change my name to bridge demo test and I'm gonna set my password to one, two, three, four. I'm going to check publicly visible. We recommend that you have this checked so that your clients can most easily find your document. If you don't have it checked, they'll have to type in the file name. And sometimes that can be difficult, especially if you use some of the auto-generated file names that are long and full of numbers. For the room selector, you can leave it set to auto to automatically assign your job to a room, or you can select a room to go into. I'm going to select room number four for this example. So the information that I'll provide to my client for basic bridge setup is the document name bridge demo test, the password 1234, and the room number 4. And when I press OK, it'll take me into real time. And if I write a couple strokes, they do come up. And so now I can connect to the file in Eclipse, or in Bridge Mobile rather. So I'm going to resize Eclipse and I'm going to go first to the website where you can view your real-time feed which is connect.eclipsecat.com And in Bridge Mobile, if I press Connect and go to Room 4, Bridge Demo Test is in the list. And so I'm going to enter password 1234. And you'll see that the stroke I wrote comes up immediately. I'm going to write some more strokes. And I am not a stenographer, and I don't currently have a dictionary. So it's going to come out as just steno. But that's going to be great to show you exactly how Apply Edits works. So I'm going to write a few more strokes. And you'll see that everything that I wrote in Eclipse came up in Bridge Mobile. And I will global a couple things to show you how the Apply Edits works. And so if we global this as an answer, it comes up as an answer. And all of the information that you continue to stroke into Eclipse will come up in your real-time document. And any corrections that you make will also go to your real-time document. So for instance, let's say this is short for skate park, which it obviously is not. If I put that in, automatically over here we see that the update has gone straight through to Bridge Mobile to my client. And so that's all you need in order to set up to do an online session for your clients for Bridge Mobile. Um, I'll show you really quickly how the Windows version of Bridge Mobile works. It works basically the same way as the web version. So if I open this up, because it's sized differently, the connect button is in the bottom left now. But if I go to room four, bridge demo test is still here. If I go to one, and if I enter one, two, three, four, and press connect, 
you'll see that everything that I already wrote, including the edits, has come through to this document. So next we can move on to the LAN demonstration, and I'll show you how you would connect to your clients if they are in the same room as you, but you don't have internet access. So to demonstrate the LAN connection, the first thing I'm going to do is connect to my LAN network router. In this case, I'm using one of the FileHub Plus routers that Advantage Software sells on our website. So I'm going to select FileHub Plus, and I've connected to it before so it remembers my password. When it connects to this particular router, it takes you to a dashboard to control different settings on the router, but you don't really need to wait for this to open or do anything with it. You can just close it. Now to output to your clients on Bridge Mobile over a LAN connection using a router, you do have to have Connection Magic Local installed on your computer, which you can download from our website at eclipsecat.com in the Bridge Mobile section. It's free and you don't need a login to download it. So I'm going to open up Connection Magic Local. And once Connection Magic Local opens up, I want to wait for it to say server started successfully, which it already does. And I'm going to make note of the IP address. You're going to need to provide this IP address to your local clients who may be using the web browser. If they're using the applications, it'll automatically populate the IP address as soon as they connect to your um, router network. So once my clients connect to the FileHub Plus as well, in the Android or iPad applications, it'll automatically fill in the IP address for them. They don't need to put it in. But if your clients are going to be using the web browser, they'll need to have the access to this IP address. You can hit the copy button to copy it and paste it into an email to send to your clients if you desire. But usually the IP addresses are pretty short and easy to type in. So once Connection Magic Local it has opened and started running, I'm going to minimize it and then go back into Eclipse. And since the settings in Eclipse are the same, no matter whether you're using the internet or you're using a router with a LAN network, I don't need to do anything other than wait to make sure that Eclipse sees the Connection Magic local server and then I can just start real time. And now you'll see in all of the same places where we previously saw SRV connected, we now see LAN connected. This indicates that it is seeing the server started by Connection Magic, and you need to wait for that if you're doing a local job before you start real time. But Eclipse should see it pretty much as soon as you open Eclipse, as long as you had Connection Magic open first. So up here I see LAN connected in the info bar, and in the status bar in the bottom right I see LAN, and if I go to Tools, Connection Magic, View Connections, again I have LAN connected. And so when I start real time this time, the process is going to be the same. And so I'm going to call this file bridge demo test 2, and I'll make the password the same, 1234. And again, I'm going to check publicly visible. You definitely want to have publicly visible checked if you're doing it over a local network, because there's no reason for the people in the room with you to have to type the name in. And the room selector doesn't matter when you're doing a LAN connection, so you can leave that at auto. When I press OK, it'll take me into Eclipse again. And my real time is coming up. So now I can connect to the Bridge Mobile session, and I can do that in a web browser. Instead of going to connect.eclipsecat.com, I can copy the IP address, paste it into my web browser, and add slash bridge at the end to get to the Bridge Mobile feed. And if I press connect, since it's a local session, the only session that's here is my test. And if I press one, two, three, four, all of the data I've already typed comes up, and if I add new steno, it also comes up. And so the application works, again, very similarly when you open up the Bridge Mobile app. In this case, I'm using the Windows app, and I hit Connect. Since the local session is the only one available, that's the only one I see. And if I hit 1234 as the password and Connect, I am connected to the existing file with the existing data, and any new data that I type in is going to come up. And so that's all you need in order to output to Bridge Mobile, whether you're doing it online or in over a local area network using a router. The settings in Eclipse are always going to be the same, and the setup in Eclipse is basically the same. The only thing that you need to remember is if you're doing it over the um, doing it 
over a router, you need to make sure that Connection Magic Local is installed and running before you actually start your real-time file or start Eclipse. The most important other note that you need to keep in mind is that your clients, when you're doing a local area network connection without the internet, do need to be connected to the same network as you before they'll be able to connect to your screen or connect to your job. As long as they're connected to the same network, Bridge Mobile will automatically fill in the IP address on the apps. And as long as they're connected to the same network, your session will be the only session available. If your clients are seeing more sessions than just your session, that may be an indication that they're on the wrong network. Thank you for joining us for this Bridge Mobile Basics video. If you have any questions or if you ever need any assistance, Advantage Software offers 24-hour support. We're available at 1-800-800-1759. Or if you don't need an immediate response, you can always email us at support at eclipsecat.com. Tech support is available for any questions that you may have about any of our products. And we're always here to help if you run into any situation you're unfamiliar with. Feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much and have a great day.